Good evening. Welcome to Thursday prayer meeting. We're going to get started in a couple of minutes, just waiting for others to join in, and we will get started in the time of worship and fellowship and prayer. Thank God for today. I thank God for this month. Thank God for this year, 2021. Good evening, good evening, and welcome to Thursday prayer meeting. We'll get started and hopefully others will join us in a bit. Father God, we thank you for this time together, for another opportunity to come together as children of God, just to fellowship with you, just to be in your presence to hear your words, to be encouraged in your presence, to fellowship with one another. Father God, as we go into this time of worship and fellowship and prayer, we pray that your name will be glorified. We pray that your presence will be felt. We pray that you would meet everyone at the point of their needs. We pray that people on this call will know that you are God, will come to know about your mighty power, your miracle working God. Yes, you are, you are a miracle working God. Come alive in all our lives, oh God. Stir up our faith in you, oh God, this evening. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen and amen. We're just going to a time of worship before we pray going to play this song. Let's worship together and then we'll go into a time of prayer. I hope you can all hear this. Thank you, Jesus. I'm playing Too Faithful by Moses this because we know that God is too faithful. He has always been faithful. Yes. Hallelujah. Hope you can all hear this. You were who you are yesterday. Yes. Today and forever. Thank you, Lord. What you say hmm. is what you do. That's our God. What he says is what he does. You hmm. never fail. You never change. Come on, worship him this you evening. Like you mean it. You're too faithful to fail me. Ha! One thing God cannot do is ever fail us. You're too faithful to disappoint me. You've proven yourself in my life. And I've come to realize you're too faithful to fail me. And if you haven't realized that God is too faithful to fail you, my prayer to you with you this evening is that you will come to the realization that our God is too faithful to fail you. He is too faithful to disappoint you. Hmm. You've proven yourself in my life and I've come to realize you're too faithful to fail me. for being a faithful God. Thank you, God, that even though seasons change, circumstances may come and go, you remain constant, you remain the same, and you remain faithful. You are who you are yesterday, today and forevermore. What you 
this song is that everything God does is because of who he is. He is too faithful to fail us. He is too committed to leave us. He is too loving to leave us halfway because of who he is. And that's what we stand on. We're not standing on what we do or do not do or the situation or the circumstance, but because of who he is, because of his faithfulness, because of his, his loving kindness, because of his covenant and his commitment to us, he is too faithful, too committed, too loving to disappoint us, to fail us, to leave us halfway. Ah, what a song. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for who you are. And because of who you are, we stand in that confident because we are yours. And because we are yours, <laughs> We know that everything is working together for our good. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So this evening, we're going to be praying. And um, what I felt that the Lord dropped on my heart for us to pray about was standing on his promise. Standing on his promise. 
what he says he will do has he said it would he not do it standing on his promise so that's what we're going to be praying about tonight standing on his promise so we're just going to dive right into it i hope you can all hear me okay and what i i want to do is i want to read a couple of scriptures to you uh to begin with and then we'll go into a time of prayer and I want to start by reading Hebrews 6, verses 13 to 20. Hebrews 6, verses 13 to 20. And I'll be reading from the easy-to-read version. I love the easy-to-read version because I understand it. When I read it, I understand it. So I love the easy-to-read version. Um, Hebrews 6, verses 13 to 20 says, God made a promise to Abraham, and there is no one greater than God. So he made the promise with an oath in his own name, an oath that he would do what he promised. He said, I will surely bless you. I will give you many descendants. Abraham waited patiently for this to happen and later he received what God promised. People always use the name of someone greater than themselves to make a promise with an oath. The oath proves that what they say is true and there is no more arguing about it. God wanted to prove that his promise was true. He wanted to prove this to those who would get what he promised. He wanted them to understand clearly that his purposes never change. So God said something would happen and he proved what he said by adding an oath. God said something would happen and he proved what he said by adding an oath. These two things cannot change. God cannot lie when he says something. God is not a man. He doesn't have to lie. He doesn't have to say something if he's not going to say it. God cannot lie when he says something. And he cannot lie when he makes an oath. So these two things are a great help to us who have come to God for safety. They encourage us to hold on to the hope that is ours. This hope is like an anchor for us. It is strong and sure and keeps us safe. It goes behind the curtain. Jesus has already entered there and opened the way for us. He has become the high priest forever, just like Melchizedek. Melchizedek, I couldn't pronounce that. I think that this is such a powerful, powerful uh, part of the chapter of Hebrews 6. Because what is really telling us is that when God makes a promise, God not only makes a promise, he makes an oath. So he almost kind of, he certifies his promise with an oath, which he, and the oath is to himself because there is no greater name. The word of God says, there is no greater name than the name of God. And because there was no greater name, the Bible says God looked around. He could not, he could not make the oath. On anything else but himself so he made a promise and he made an oath on himself and says that this is a double reassurance if you needed security if you needed stability so we're human beings we like control we like to know what is gonna happen when it is it's going to happen that sometimes gives us a sense of safety if you need security if you need a sense of safety or a sense of certainty this chapter, this part of the chapter is saying that God's promise is that sense of safety. God's promise is that sense of security. God's promise is that sense of certainty. Because once God says it, it is unchangeable. Because God does not lie. And I love what it says at the end there, that this is where our hope comes from. Our hope comes from standing on his promise. That means you cannot have hope if you do not know the promises of God. You cannot have hope if you don't know what God has said or spoken to you about that situation. You cannot have hope if you do not understand 
the way that God works or the word of God in that situation. Because this chapter says our hope comes from understanding and knowing his promise. They encourage us to hold on to hope. And says this hope is already ours. And the fact that this hope is already ours means that this hope is already available. It is accessible to us. So by standing on his promise, what we're doing is we're just claiming the hope that God has already given us. Because in every situation we find ourselves in, God has already declared a promise. God's word has already gone forth. And so having that hope that's already as is, is, is just assessing what is already available. And it says that this hope is our anchor. This hope is our anchor. We hope because we know that God's promise has gone has come to has gone through, has gone to pass. And it says, like Abraham, he waited patiently. I mean, Abraham was a patient man because he took a couple of years. He waited patiently, he held on to hope. He held on to hope as his anchor. Who on this call needs to hold on to hope like an anchor? It says that this hope that comes from standing on the promise of God, it is strong, it is sure, it, it keeps us safe. It says the hope that comes from God is not one that shakes, it doesn't shake, it's not unsteady, it's not um is not one that you cannot get your bearing. It says that the hope that comes from God is strong, it is sure, it keeps us safe. Who here on this call needs to tap into that hope? Who here on this call needs to be reminded that the promises of God is as good as the manifestation because once God has said it, it's going to happen and we hold on to that hope. Today we're praying about standing on the promises of God and what I'm just trying to do is I'm trying to to lay the ground for us to have an understanding of why God's promises are so important because in the spiritual realm God's promise is as good as the actual reality because God is not a God that he should lie. See, God cannot lie when he comes to an oath. It says these two things are our sense of safety and certainty. So let's hold on to that. And as we talk about hope, I want us to go to Romans 8, 24 and 25. Romans 8, verses 24 and 25. I'm going to be reading from the easy to read version. And we're, we're, we're talking about hope here. It says we were saved to have this hope. If we can see what we are waiting for, this is not really hope. If we can see what we're waiting for, this is not really hope. So this hope that we're talking about, that is linked to the promise of God, is not based on the things that we can see. Yeah? If you can see it, then you're not, you're not pulling on hope. You're not pulling on the hope that God has made accessible to you. If you can see, you're not pulling on the promises that God has made us. He says, because this hope is not what we can see. See, people don't hope for something they already have. You're not going to hope for something if you already have it. Then there's no, there's no need for hope because hope is, is future oriented. It's something that you want to have on expectation of something that would happen that hasn't already happened. And so, you know, I'm going to make a statement here to say that sometimes, you know, this hope that, that the Bible is talking about is often linked to something that we cannot see. It's often linked to something that our reality is saying is different from what God says it is. Because we look around our reality and we, we don't have it. Because if we had it, then there's no need to hope. But if we're hoping, it's because the reality that we see versus the promise of God, they are, they are, they are contradictory. It, it, it's, not, it's not the same. You know, God's promise is saying one thing, your reality is saying something else. It says, but we are hoping for something we don't have yet, and we are waiting for it patiently. Today, we're praying about standing on the promise of God. God always gives us a promise, but the promise that God gives us in season isn't, isn't something that happens now. God's promises are always future-oriented. God's promises is almost like a, it's like a lamp that tells us the direction we should go. You know, when we find ourselves in confusion, we find ourselves overwhelmed, 
or we find ourselves being unsure what god's promises do is that you know they light the path the direction in which god wants us to take and so it's about we are here this is where god is taking us and this is where god's promise is the light that takes us in that direction and what we hold on to as we're walking in that direction is hope Hope is our anchor so that even when life tries to move us this way or move us that way or cause us to doubt or cause us to question or cause us to think, can he really do it? Can God really do it? Am I over spiritualizing this? Is this really in God's hand? That is where hope comes in because hope is what then anchors us because it's like, hey, our hope that God has given us that is ours, that is accessible to us is a hope that is secure, is a hope that is strong, but is a hope that that is not something that we can see now, but is about to come. So having said that, we're going to begin to pray. And we're going to pray with this understanding and with this confidence that in whatever situation we find ourselves in, whether it's for ourselves, whether it's for our family members, whether it's for our church, whether it's for our pastors. As we begin to pray, we're going to stand on the promise of God. And we're going to pray with vigor and strength because we know that if God has said it, he will do it. And for some of us, we might we even want to pray for hope. Say, God, I, I, I know you have this promise, but I'm finding it hard to, to believe it. And we're going to, some of us are going to pray for hope. That Father God, give us the ability to have hope that if you have said it, you will do it. So the first promise that we're going to pray from is our promise for the year. Uh, the promise for the year for, for Fountain of Life Church. Because this is a word that has been given to us by God as a church, as a congregation. So we're going to use that to pray and pray for our year because this is God's word to God's word's word to all of us. And the beautiful thing about God's word is that it will show up in our lives in very different ways. So the way that this promise of the year will show up in my life will be very different from the way that this promise of the year will show up in your life. So we're going to start by praying from the promise of the year. And we know what the promise of the year is. It's Obadiah 1 verse 17. And before we go to the promise of the of the of the year and begin to pray that, uh, I, I I was reading this chapter and I and, and God really ministered to me as I was reading this chapter because as you begin to read from chapter one of Obadiah, you you realize that you know God is God is talking to the people of Edom and it's it's really a, it's God is declaring judgment on the people of Edom and, and in between. You know, God declaring judgment in, to the people of Edom. He's also standing up and fighting for his people. And so Obadiah is interesting because while it's a chapter of God declaring judgment, it's also a chapter of redemption. And it's also a chapter of restoration. So for the people of God, it's a chapter of redemption and restoration. For the people who are not of God, is a, is a chapter of judgment. And I think one of the things that really stood out to me before we go to chapter, uh, to verse 17 was, um, I'm reading from the message translation, um, verses 2 to 4. And God was talking to the people of Edom and he was saying to them, just going to read a little bit below. He said, you thought you were so great, perched high among the rocks, kick king of the mountain." thinking of yourself nobody can get to me nobody can touch me think again even if I can eagle you hang out on a high cliff face even if you build your nest in the stars I'll bring you down to earth God's sure word and when I read that it, it really struck me and it really ministered to me because I felt like God was you know ministering to me and saying for a lot of us you know we've encountered experiences whether we brought it from 2020 or even experiences this year that have that that has taken this false place or authority in our lives uh it it, it has almost kind of these things have come up and and they just feel to be they it seems like they are they're taking over it seems like they are they, they're like trying to to make to, to become territorial 
over your life when they have no place over your life and it has almost kind of felt like they are winning or this this experience or this event or this thing you're struggling with it's almost felt so at some time like this thing is is winning it's 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 doing more or it's it's, it's you're you're feeling like you're you it's it's overcoming you almost and that was the the thing that i felt like god was ministering to me and and he was saying you know that this thing that has thought that it has it has made itself at home in your life this unwelcome guest the lord was saying look whatever it is that has that has done that or has taken that position from this moment forward we come against that in the name of jesus see this year what god is saying is that he is he is seeing he is coming to rescue he is coming to fight and that's where verse 17 our promise for the year comes in so as god begins to fight against those things in our lives that is seemingly taking territory trying to make a lame trying to have authority where god has not given them authority that has made us even think that ah is this thing really greater than me this is where verse 17 comes alive in our lives it says but <laughs> not so on mount zion because on on Mount Zion there is respite there it is a safe and is a holy place the family of Jacob will take their possessions for those who took them from them and that is the promise that God is that God has declared for this year not so for Mount Zion not so for the children of God begin to open your mouth and declare and as you declare I want you to remember the power that God God's promises hold say so God promise when God makes a promise not only does he make a promise he adds an oath to the promise so that there is no questioning there is no doubt that can he do it would he do it because he has already done it and the Lord is saying hmm, this is the time for the Lord to rise up and to fight our battles. This is the time for the Lord to rise up and anything that has laid hold in our life, that has seemingly tried to take, take, uh, uh, to, to make its play, make a home or to, to have authority where God has not given his authority. God is declaring, God is saying clearly this year, but not so on Mount Zion, but not so for my children, but not so for the children of God from my children because the Lord of God has said there is respite here where the presence of God is there is respite when God is fighting our battles there is respite then there is no surprise then that God says in Exodus 14 14 your job is to stand still your job is to stay and let me move let me fight your battles God says there is respite here where there has been restlessness where there has been uncomfortability where there has been unpleasantness where you have wept where you have thought but God, why me? And you thought, God, why am I even asking this question? Whatever it is, the Lord has declared that this year he is moving us into a safe and a holy place. He is coming to fight our battles. The things that God has not given authority in our life that has tried to have authority. God has said, now it is time for you to move. You have no place here no longer. You have no place here no more. Not so from Mount Zion. Not so from my children. And not only is God coming to redeem, the Lord of God has said this year, I will not only redeem, but I will restore. Come on now. I will not only redeem, but I will restore. He says, for the family of Jacob, you will take back that possession from those who took them from you. So whatever we feel we have lost, see, there's no, there's no, there's no, uh, doubt that when covid came you know all of us there was a level of loss for some of us the loss was bigger than others but there was a level of loss but god has declared this year our year of repossessing our possession god has declared this year our year of restoration what a good god we have see as we read god does not have to give us a promise god does not have to to declare that he's going to do something good for us God does not have to, to give us promises every year or promises every week or promises our own personal promises. He doesn't have to do it. 
but he does it because of who he is. See, Romans 8 says, when you understand who God is, then we say, if God is for us, <laughs> who can be against us? If God, if God moves, not because of what we do or what we don't do, but he does it because of who he is, because his name must take the glory, because God from the beginning of the world set out to love us and have a covenant with us. If this is our God, if this is our God can see the things that we are going through and call it upon himself to look at us and say, I'm going to make a promise to you. Not only am I going to make a promise to you, but I'm going to put an oath on that promise just so you know that I'm serious. Just so you know that when it comes to you, I do not joke. Just so you know that when it comes to you, I do not lie. I do not take, I don't, I don't play with my children. I do not play with my children. So God says, he looked at us this year and said, look, I have seen the things that have happened. And I am telling you that this year I am coming to fight your battle. This year I am giving you respite. This year I'm taking you to a place of safety. You're going to find, no, you're going to find comfort. And you're going to find a home in my safe place, in my holy place. And not only would I do that, I'm going to make sure that everything that you lost, anything that you lost while you were waiting, while you were holding on, while you had hope in my word, in my promise, I will restore that to you. You will repossess your possession. That is the word that God has given us this year. Begin to pray that with confidence. Begin to pray that with a certainty and a reassurance that this year, God is standing up anything that has tried to take authority or make a home in my life or my children's life or my business or in the house of God where I congregate whatever it is that is not of God the word of God is saying that this year God is turning to those things and they will be here no more they will have no footing no more they will have no authority no more because God is here to fight our battles God is here to give us respite God is here to give us a place that is safe he is taking us into his holy place and we will possess our possessions things that we that were lost we will lose no more we will regain them in the name of jesus this is our this is our year of redemption and restoration and so shall it be in the name of jesus and like we read hope is the light that leads our path to the promise of god and so we call upon that hope a hope that is accessible to us a hope that god has given us freely freely accessible to us we say father god help me to hold on to the hope which is our anchor which is strong which is secure help me to hold on to hope that if you have said it you will do it in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus come on pray pray where you are pray with the certainty pray with the confidence pray believing in the Word of God because this is the promise that God has given us and it's not just it's a it's a promise for the year for a reason so that means that through this year we're gonna see God actualize this promise in many different ways we're gonna see God actualize this promise not just in our lives we're gonna see God actualize lies this promise in the lives of the people that we love in the lives of the people that we care about in the lives of our leaders in the lives of our pastors when it comes to fountain of life london we will see this promise being actualized in the name of jesus begin to pray begin to pray begin to pray begin to pray thank you jesus thank you jesus because being a child of god is our security come on begin to pray begin to pray we thank you oh god we thank you oh god we thank you for your word we thank you for your promise we thank you that you will give us the ability to stand on your promise. We thank you, God, that you will give us the ability to stand on your promise in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, the next promise I want us to, to pray about is our is our is our own promise for the year. So the, the, the promise that you picked this year, I hope and believe that um everyone has picked a promise for this year. And um if you have, I, I would like you to pull that up now, or if you've, you you kind of already know it by heart, I want you to bring that to mind. And we're going to pray about the, the promise that God has given us personally for this year. So for me, my promise for this year was Luke 18 verses 27. Jesus replied, what is impossible with a man is possible with God. <laughs> And when I saw this promise, I was I was excited. <laughs> but this promise has already begin has it has already begun to manifest in my life. I've already began to see God do the impossible. 
So what I just want you to do now is to pull out your promise and begin to pray that promise because this is God's word for you, God's personal word. See, that's what I love about God. He's so intimate with us. He's so intentional with us. You know, he, he, he speaks to us as a group, but he also speaks to us personally, speaking to our lives, speaking to our needs, even the things that we don't know that we are, we, we are yet to need or we're yet to want. He speaks to us personally through our promises. So I'm just going to ask you now to call on that promise and begin to declare that promise over your life for this year. And begin to declare that as you go through this year, you will not lose sight of this promise. Because as we said, God's promises are the direction of where God wants to take us. We are here now, but where God is taking us, he uses his promise as a direction to guide us to where God, He where he wants to take us. So as we begin to pray this promise, pray that as you go through this year, that you would hold on to this promise, that you will not be distracted, you will not forget about the promise, but also that God will begin to reveal things to you and you will see the manifestation of this promise happen in your life in the name of Jesus. So begin to pray. I'm going to pray about my promise. I thank you, God, because your word says to me that the things that are impossible with man, I will see you show up because you are the God that does the impossible because with you, all things are possible. I thank you, God, for this word because as I navigate my year as I go through this year I will see and come to know you as the God who does the impossible I will see and come to know you as the God that no matter what I see no matter what I've been told I will see and come to know you that with God because I have God on my side this thing that looks impossible this thing that is seemingly impossible with you it would be possible whether it's about my health whether it's about my relationship whether it's about my finances whether it's about my relationship with others whether it's about the the ministry that you have be, you have given me to, to do, whatever it is, oh God, I thank you because your promise says that I will see you do the impossible. And when I'm tied to you, there is nothing that is impossible in the name of Jesus. I hope you are praying. I hope you are praying using your promise and begin to declare what God has told you, what God has spoken in your life. And if you if you know if you have a promise where you're thinking, but God, I don't understand this promise. I see it, but I don't understand it. Then your prayer should be, God, please help me understand this promise. Holy Spirit, please reveal to me what God's promise means, what God is, is asking of me this year, what God is telling me that he's going to do in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, help me to understand this promise because this promise is the direction of where God is taking me. Just begin to open your mouth and declare, yes, God, I will see you do the impossible in the name of Jesus. And this year I will testify in the name of Jesus. I will testify of your goodness. I will testify of your mercy. I will testify of what you have done of your favor. I thank you, God, for this promise. You didn't have to give me this promise, but you did. And for that, I say thank you. And I thank you, God, for the ways that you've already shown me that you truly do the impossible. And all I need to do is to come back on you, is to, is to place my anchor within your presence, is to come to you and say, God, I know that these things that are happening, no man can do it. There's nobody around me that can do it but you. And because of that, I'm holding on to you, God. I'm not leaving your presence to you do it and you've already shown me God that you will do it and you have done it I thank you God I thank you God for the ways that you've already made this promise alive and real in my life already and you will continue to do so in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I hope you are praying I hope you are praying and, and, and leaning into that promise that God has given you leaning into that promise you know if there's anything I want us to take away this evening is that God is intentional everything he does is intentional he doesn't have to give us a promise but he always does he doesn't have to make hope accessible to us but he always does and because he has done that you know all we need to do is to stand on that promise as we read in hebrews 6 13 verses 20 see god's promise carries weights god's promise is not like a man's promise you know, I've, I've made many promises that I have I've not been able to keep because I'm human. But God's promises are not like that. God's promise carry weight. It, they carry weight. God's promise is as good as done. I don't know who needs to hear that today, but God's promises are as good as done. If he says he will do it, he will do it. 
and so all we need to do is believe because when we believe in his promise we are made what is made available to us is the hope of god and as we read god's hope is our anchor it's our anchor god's hope is secure it is steady it doesn't waver so that is the that is the word this evening that god has asked me to share to convey that we should stand on his promise and never give up stand on his promise and never give up and remember this is our year of redemption and restoration this is our year of repossessing our possession i remember what we said about hope we do not hope for the things that we see and we already have so if you're thinking to yourself but there's nothing i need to repossess everything is fine remember hope is about the things we are yet to have and we cannot see and remember god's words is God's promises are future oriented. So if God has set a word, even though we do not see it now, we hold on to it because God is taking us to a place that we cannot see. We thank you, God, for this time of prayer. We thank you, God, for your word. We thank you for this word reminding us to stand on your promise. We thank you for this word reminding us that you're not a man that you should lie. That if you say you will do it, you will do it. And when we hold on to your promise, we get access to hope. Hope is our anchor. We thank you for our promise for the year, Obadiah 1 verse 17, that says that, but not on Mount Zion, that we will find respite, we will find, you, you will take us into the holy and safe place, and that anything that has been lost, that we will repossess that in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, God, for the personal promises that you have given us this year. We will stand strong to those promises, and we will come back to testify that just as the Lord said it, he did it. That will be our testimony in the name of Jesus. Just as he said he will do, he did it. And we're coming to testify to the glory of his name in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and a big resounding amen, amen. Thank you so much for, for coming, for logging on today and joining me in this time of prayer. Uh, and just fellowshipping you know all of us fellowshipping together you know i think it's, it's important that we do this and, and we get to fellowship with with one another and i hope that you've been uh blessed this evening um as always uh if you'd like to give to what god is doing in the house of Father of life church london i know we're still meeting online um but we're still a church so <laughs> if you'd like to give to what god is doing in the house um please um you know give your offering by paying directly into our church account and if you do not have that detail please dear Marcin will be more than happy to uh, give you that detail so I don't have any other announcements we're just going to say the grace and we're going to end it here may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. And so sin shall have no dominion over us for the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside of us and quickens our mortal bodies to the glory of his holy name. Amen and amen. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening and we will see you back on here on Sunday. Bye for now.